But anyway, they, I got a call again from some executive at Paramount saying, would I meet with the head of Paramount uh, to talk about this? I said, sure. And I went in to see it was a man named Y. Frank Freeman uh, at the time, a uh, very courtly Southern gentleman, very nice. But very right wing, as I recall. Oh, very, to the right of John Wayne. I mean, he was really there. And uh, he spent the beginning telling me about there had been a, a very nasty uh, strike in the, I think, 46 or something like that, of uh, technicians and uh, below the line people. And he said there was, they were picketing out there. He said, I could have gone out and. Uh, and solve the whole thing. They were my boys talking to them. He said, but Russian-looking men kept interfering. I mean, he was, he was on that level of sophistication. You know, he was, he had a dossier on me on his desk that went back to college. He had every political thing that I had done, every place I had lived, uh, and when I had lived there, the, the whole, Thing. He said, do you mind if we go down this list and you tell me whether it's true or not and how you feel about it? I said, fine. I bet, you know, uh, at that point I felt, fuck it, I had, I had survived the thing. There wasn't much more they could do to me that they hadn't done and I had survived it and I, I would again if it happened. Uh, and it went down. It was, you know, like, like this is your life. The, you know, there were some things I said. Uh, they were all true, by the way. They, you know, there was uh, uh, some things I said. Uh, n yes, I would do this again. That's the way I feel. A couple of things I said. No, I wouldn't do it again. I, you know, and I, I just leveled with them. I didn't. There was didn't seem to be any reason not to. And and we finished the end. He said, "Okay, thank you." Uh, you've been very cooperative. I'm going to take this up with someone I talked to about these things, who is the man named O'Neill, who's the head of the American Legion. I, and uh, I'll get back to you. I said, great, thank you. And they called two weeks later and said, okay, you can go to work. And that, I still couldn't work in television for another couple of years, really. Uh, but movies, I wasn't interested in television at that point. I was just interested in movies. I've directed twice. Mm -hmm. I directed the fourth remake of a Shirley Temple movie called Little Miss Marker. Which is a Damon Runyon story, right? Damon Runyon yeah. story. And uh, uh, Walter Matthau was playing the lead. I then cast Julie Andrews because I thought that would make a very interesting uh, relationship with a lot of conflict. Turned out it didn't, that uh, there was zero chemistry between them, and I think they didn't even really like each other particularly, although Julie was very, very nice. I've worked with her too. Yeah. She's, she's lovely. I she mean, was she's just, just great, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, Tony Curtis was in it, and <clears throat> he was in his drug phase there, you know, and one time I had uh, done a scene, a fairly long scene, we had a lot to say, and he couldn't remember his lines at all, and at one point he said, excuse me, he went off, he went back to his trailer, uh, inhaled a few things, came back very sprightly, and he knew all of his lines, but not in their proper order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then it took a while for him to come back to and I, it was not a happy experience for me I was uh, I had waited I think too long to direct so I took something which was not my kind of thing really to do it uh, as my friend Martin Ritt said to me it should be either somebody 22 years old or somebody who's done 70 movies, really, that kind of thing. I, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not 
well, I was going to say it's not terrible. It probably is terrible, but it's mild. You know, it's mild. I was going through a divorce at the time. I had my kids with me. It was not a good time. I mean, it was not a happy experience. And the picture, of course, was not successful. Uh, then I did this half-hour thing for HBO for a series of theirs called Women and Men. And that was different. It was, it was from a short story by Erwin Shaw. It was material that I knew. And the two actors were lovely, you know. And that was a happy experience. That was very nice. And how, how have you gotten along with directors as a rule? Well, I've been lucky in, in uh, the directors I've worked with. Uh, Arthur Penn, Sidney Lumet, uh, Michael Ritchie, Martin Ritt. Uh, they were all directors that I had a personal relationship with. And they were all directors who wanted the writer around. I would get a call from Marty or from Michael saying the scene isn't working, you, you have to do some work on it. He would call the writer. You know, so they, as I say, they, I didn't have the excuse of saying, oh no, that's, that's not me up on the, on the screen. What was up there was me, good or bad or whatever it was. It was, I had no excuses for pinning it on. Well, that, that's not true. I, there, there were a couple of, one or two movies where uh, I felt that, that, that the director screwed it up. I was on the whole lucky in the directors that I worked with. Same thing with actors? I didn't have anything to do with the actors, really, you know. Uh, and so... I was thinking about your relationship with Lancaster back at the... Well, Lang, it's in, it, uh, interesting because, as I said, I, like, I liked him. You know, then I didn't see him for a long time. Uh, and I was in Paris with Arthur Penn working on a movie called The Front, not The Front, The Train. Right. Uh, World War II movie that Arthur was going to direct, that Bert was playing the lead in. Uh, and they fired Arthur after one day shooting. Uh, I thought it was grossly unfair. It was, uh, uh, during the period I was writing, Lancaster came over, uh, remembered our relationship was very nice. Uh, he had a son who was uh, crippled, or partially crippled. He had a, a limp. Uh, very sweet, very nice. He wrote Bad News Bears oh, yeah. afterward. Uh, but uh, he was younger then. He was adolescent. And I would take him out to lunch. Uh, we were working at a studio. and. Uh, and one time he uh, he came. To, I invited him. He said, "I can't go." I said, "Why?" Not? He said, "My father said I can't go with you." I said, "Why?" He said, "Because you are paying all the time, and I can't go." And I found that very strange in in Bert. But anyway, he was responsible for uh, firing Arthur. The scene he had shot, the one day shooting was a scene between Bert and a very good French actor named Michel Simon, who was in it. And uh, I watched the shooting, and it was a very emotional scene for Bert, a relatively emotional scene. And he wouldn't do what Arthur wanted him to do, you know. And at one point, I'll never forget this, he turned to Arthur and said, listen, here, I'll give it the grin, you know. and. Uh, uh, I think Arthur was pushing him into an area he didn't want to go. His last couple of movies had not been terribly successful. And I think he was worried he was going to get an art house movie that also would not be commercially successful. Uh, because I got a call at 11 that night from Bert uh, saying they were letting Arthur go. And John Frankenheimer was coming over to take his place. And he said, John's a bit of a whore, but he'll do what I want him to do. So he was already turning into this golem 
you know, this, mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, and uh, they did the movie, and the movie was a good movie. Yeah. And uh, you, but you, you, I left. He said, you would, you, "Would you stay and yeah. finish?" And I said, "No." And you, you had worked on Magnificent Seven too, right? Or well, yeah, I wrote the first draft of a mm. totally different movie. I mm. mean, mine was uh, much closer to the original in who the characters were and the kind of characters they were. Uh, and there was really nothing of mine left in in what was done. I didn't deserve mm -hmm. a credit or any. And when I did it, uh, Ewell was going to direct it. Interesting. And uh, he would have been a good director, uh, you know. And uh, uh, he was going to direct it. And then Tyrone Power died. He was shooting one of those biblical things and they offered you a great great deal of money to take his place and that was the end of his directing huh. really you know he went and did that and John Sturges wrote I don't know whether you will well he, he acted in it he wasn't going to act in it mm -hmm. originally he was just going to direct it 